All right, today the Attorney General Bill Barr had strong words about Robert Mueller's upcoming testimony questioning why the Democrats are even holding a hearing with the former special counsel. Let's listen in. It seems to me the only uh, reason for doing that is to create some kind of public spectacle. And if, if Bob uh, decides that he doesn't want to be subject to that, then the Department of Justice would certainly back him. And tonight, Congressman Peter King, New York, is warning, quote, severe serious abuses by the FBI and CIA in the Russia probe are going to come out. Well, we've been saying that for two plus years. Joining us now, Fox News contributor, former Congressman Trey Gowdy. You know, one thing I've always liked about you is when you dig in, God help whoever's on the other side, you as a prosecutor, you never lost the case, correct? I've never won one with my with my wife, so um, I'm okay in a courtroom. I haven't done right, too that's well a good outside. Loss. That's okay. That's a good line. All right, but it's thirty years worth of losses. I, I've watched you in these hearings at times, and I know what you're capable of. So now, we'll try and look back and, and give us, bring us into what what's really happening in your view. You got the Inspector General, you got the comments of the Attorney General, you got Mueller testifying, which I think will backfire. Then you got Durham. He's seeing steel, all these people coming out last minute on FISA abuse. What do you see happening? A couple of things. I think the attorney general was right. The, the hearing next week with Mueller will be um, a carnival. It'll be a freak show. Think back to March of 2017, Sean, when, when Devin Nunes had a public hearing. I love Devin, uh, but public hearings uh, don't turn out well no matter who calls them. Devin called a public hearing, had Jim Comey and Mike Rogers. A hundred times the witness said, I cannot answer that question in this forum. You would think the media would say that was a waste of everybody's time. Don't ever do that again. They love it. They love it because what Adam Schiff and Swalwell and the others did is read newspaper articles that contain classified information only for the witness that then have to say, I can't comment on that in this setting. That's what's going to happen next week. Mueller's report's out. He's not going to deviate from the four corners of that report. But that will not keep House Democrats from asking. The focus will be on the question, not the answer. We, Mark we Mueller. Know. The other thing that's going on, yeah, I, I love Peter King, but Republicans have got to get better at not always promising what's getting ready to come. Look at what already exists. Look at what Horowitz found, struck in page with a historic level of bias. You have a dossier that was used in a court pleading that was not verified. You have Steele, who was defrocked as a source, but yet continued to provide information to the world's premier law enforcement agency. And you got a DOJ senior official in Bruce Orr, who is in the chain of evidence from the from, from Fusion GPS to the DOJ, we shouldn't have to promise anything else. That ought to be enough for my fellow citizens to say, you know what, something ain't right. Well, who authored the, the Mueller report? When did he know that there was no collusion? Uh, how is it he had time for taxicab medallions? You're a prosecutor. This prosecutorial discretion, it's used every day. But he had time for taxi medallions, fair abuse. Uh, let's see, loan applications and taxes, how did he not have time for a dirty dossier? I'd like that question answered from Russia. I think what he's going to say, I think what he's going to say on that, and Johnny Ratcliffe and I were discussing it over the weekend, I think what he's going to say is that's not what, what Rod Rosenstein asked me to do. I did what, what the acting DOJ AG asked me to do, which is look at, go back to Rod's memo. What did Russia do in 2016? And then a specific reference to the Trump campaign. I think that's Mueller's out. His out on when did you know there was no collusion is going to be when we interviewed the last witness. So I, I, Mueller, you know, Mueller doesn't want to come. He doesn't want to come because he's not going to deviate from his report. What, what you're going to get are these incendiary questions about obstruction and impeachment. You're not going to learn but, anything but, next Wednesday that you don't already know. It's just going to be great for well, I suspect he's going to have a hard time answering how he didn't, how you had one candidate pay for Russian lies and it became the basis of a FISA war. How did that not become an influence in the 2016 election, but taxi medallions did? I'd like an answer to that question. I hope somebody can get that ask and answered in five minutes. <laughs> five minutes is not much to unlock the mysteries well, of the Bob world. Bob Mueller's nine and a half minutes was not exactly stellar, and um, I think the Attorney General graciously bailed him out with a joint statement. That's a guess on my part. I hope I'm wrong. I just don't think next Wednesday is going to help anybody um, 
figure out well, what's been going on the I last think you're two pretty years. Smart I do guy. think Horowitz and Durham will, but I don't think Mueller, Mueller is. All right, Trey Gowdy, thank you. South Carolina tonight. We appreciate it. Here with Reaction, Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows and Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. All right, before I get to this stuff, there's a big fight going on in North Carolina, one of my favorite <laughs> states, Congressman Meadows, uh, which you happen to represent well. I kind of wish you were running for Senate. Jim and I agree on that. We've talked behind your back. Um, tell us what's going on. You know, it's, it is a special election that's happening tomorrow. I'm supporting uh, Dr. Greg Murphy, who will be not only the best candidate and represent Congress well, but he's willing to fight for this president, just like you just saw. The media gets them both coming and going. He needs people that are willing to stand up for him. And so Dr. Greg Murphy hopefully will earn the, the trust of the people there in eastern North Carolina. Jim and I have endorsed him, and he'll be a member of the Freedom Caucus and a real fighter. Well, you know, I got to tell you, this is important for a couple of reasons. We need more of you guys, because without the Freedom Caucus, we have nothing. And those are not words, because we now mm. have seen what you guys have been doing behind the scenes. All right, so as you look at the reaction of the president, Jim Jordan, Kim Jong-un, he didn't bribe them. He's not bribing Iranian mullahs. The only thing the president gives is time. That's it, his time of anyone else's. And he says America first, and he doesn't want to intervene in, in a war that we're going to pull out of because it's politically charged three years later. So to me, that's common sense. Advocates for the Democrat Party instead of reporters of facts. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's just who they are. And they don't report the real facts that matter, like the fact that unemployment is at its lowest in 50 years, taxes have been cut, the regulations reduced, economy growing, as you said, at over 3%, 200 and some thousand jobs added last month. Gorsuch and Kavanaugh on the court out of the Iran deal, embassy in Jerusalem, hostage home from North Korea, and you could go on and on. But the press is going to attack this guy, and the Democrats are going to attack him because they're all focused much more focused on stopping President Trump than they are in helping the country. And that's the fundamental problem in Washington today. And that's why the race in North Carolina, as Mark just mentioned, is so important. Greg Murphy will come and help the president fight the swamp and do what needs to be done to help the country so we can deal with these Democrats and the press and all they're trying to stop. What do you make, Mark Meadows? I think this is a big report by Catherine Herridge and also big news by John Solomon. But Catherine Herridge, what we've already known, that what James Comey testified to in October 2016, the Russian lies of Hillary Clinton that were paid for were in fact unverifiable. Now they're going deeper. Now we know that this woman Kavlak over at the State Department. Now we know that Bruce Orr, because of your interrogation and Jim's interrogation behind closed doors, they all said they warned Comey. They warned the FBI. They told them everything about the dossier being phony, and they used it as the bulk of information to get the warrant to spy on the campaign of Trump anyway. Where is that taking us? Well, I, what we see is, is James Comey went through not only yellow flashing lights, but he went through red stop lights to try to get this president and indict this president. And I can tell you that not only the, the good work that Catherine Herridge reported in terms of what we're seeing, what we knew, but we know that Christopher Steele not only was talking to the DOJ, was talking to the FBI, was talking to the media, was talking to the State Department. He was talking to anybody who would listen he was trying before to talk they to Mueller through Orr. He was sending uh, messages to the special counsel's yep. office. He was sending up smoke signals everywhere trying to get somebody to take this particular story that was false. The FBI knew it was false. They knew they had credibility problems, and yet they well, continued to spy on American citizens. But Jim Jordan, Jordan, didn't he say, Comey, that he doesn't spy? That sounds yeah. like spying Sean, to me. <laughs> here, here's why Catherine's story is so important, why people are coming forward in Mr. Horowitz's investigation. The reason they're coming forward is because there's a new sheriff in town. That's Bill Barr. And Bill Barr has announced he's going to get to the bottom. Never forget what he said. We talked about this on your show. He said there was a failure of leadership at the upper echelon of the FBI. He said spying occurred. He said there's a basis for his concern about the spying that took place. And he used terms that should scare every American. Unauthorized surveillance and political surveillance. And he and John Durham are going to get to the bottom of it. And that's why people are coming forward in Michael Horowitz's investigation. All right. Thank you both.